Okay. Hey, you know with these piercings, okay. there is a risk of burn. Yeah. We're going to take every precaution. I'll use the safest settings possible, but if you get a burn... I shared with her, if she gets a burn, it's going to be disfiguring, it's going to be ugly, and it's going to be a permanent scar. We're going to do everything we can to prevent it. However, she's at high risk. I'm getting a breast augmentation. I previously had a back injury and so it caused muscle atrophy. So I would like to get some enhancements to feel more like a woman. I've been waiting since before COVID. So in February, I came through. I scheduled beforehand with um, the other doctor just to kind of get a spot in. But I knew I wanted to work with him. So since February, now it's June. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Justine. I'm going to be your nurse today. Hey, Mercedes, can I have you verify your name and your birthday for me, please? Um, Mercedes Christian. Perfect. All right, you have the right patient. So, Mercedes. Is that job coming off? I had the tattoo places and stuff were closed, and me and him talked about. Just he's just gonna take it off. Either either way. Whatever works. Oh, he him. knows about it already? Yeah. Perfect. I was like, ah. Yeah, no, um, it's, it's COVID, so you really can't. Right. Can't do any no worries. So, as soon as she walked in and I verified her name, my eye was immediately drawn to her chest because I noticed something shiny and it was a dermal piercing. So, I started to panic a little bit. Yeah, ready? Sorry about that. Miss Mercedes, before we go in with the check-in process, we have two options. Um, option number one is we continue with the surgery today. Um, how many piercings do you have on your person? I could visibly see one here and here, and then she also told us about a third one. I have these two and I have one down there. Okay. Option number two is you can get rescheduled for Friday at length. We have the, this, the tools over there to go there with the surgery. I live with the life so I have to go with the number one option. You want to go uh, with the number one option? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give Dr. Sajan a call to let him know that we're go for today. Okay. I wasn't aware of the piercing down there. I don't know if that's going to take the... That one can come out? Yeah. So... I had to call the doctor. Justine called me in the morning and told me our surgery patient has a piercing on her chest. I asked Justine, well, just remove it or have the patient remove it. She told me it was a dermal. Big problem. When people have piercings on their body and we do surgery, what can happen is they can get permanent burns on their body. That's because during the surgery, I use something called an electrocautery. I use this to do my dissection and to stop bleeding. Now, when you use the electrocautery, it conducts electricity through the body. Normally, that just goes out through a grounding pad. However, when you have metal in your skin, like a dermal, it attracts the electricity, and there's a high risk she gets a third degree burn through her skin into her chest bone. She's aware of the risk um, for burns. They live in Bellingham. They don't want to make the drive all the way back up to come back down on Friday. Um, she just informed me she also has a piercing down there. That sh yes. No way. Cancel. There's no way I'm taking this risk. You know, there's some risk you're willing to take when doing the case, but a permanent burn in someone's vagina, no way are we dealing with it. I was like, that's it. I got a three strike rule. We already got two strikes and now we got a third strike. You got to tell her to take the piercing out. There's no way we're dealing with this. If there's one left on her chest, we can try to tape that if she signs a waiver. But on the vagina, 
Absolutely not. Not dealing with that. I operate above the belt. So I'll have her try to remove that now then before I continue with anything else and then I'll keep you updated. You, I gotta tell her to take off the piercing down there. I was, I was shocked. I was panicked. We gotta take it off. We're doing surgery today. So if she couldn't remove her piercing, I just wanted to remind her that she had the option to reschedule her surgery for Friday. Yeah, I just um, live in Bellingham now. Yeah. So the hardest part, I just paid my driver to be here. So I'm not, I can't really like, and my ex just took me for all my money. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you. Luckily, she got the piercing out. She got the vaginal piercing out, but she couldn't get the chest one out, obviously, because it was a dermal. So we agreed that she signed a waiver and we taped around it. There is a risk that during the surgery, she gets a full burn. She was willing to accept it. She understood it. We moved forward because she was able to get the other one out. I asked for a bigger B, smaller C, but then um, we went with the 345 cc's. I, I feel I feel like it'll be a great thing as far as, you know, a lot of people want to go bigger. So I feel like if I have boobs, then I should just be good, period. All right, Mercedes, you're here for the morning. Hello, Mercedes. How are you? It's going to be a great day today. How are you feeling? Great. Now that I see you, it's just a more... Actually, it's more real. Is it? <laughs> yes. So I'm going to put all my measurements on. Oh. You're welcome to take your mask off if that's more comfortable for you to do more. I don't want you to get lightheaded. Okay. So what we're going to do for this part is we're going to have you stand up. We'll turn the warmer off. Justine's going to help wrap the gown around your waist and I'll put my measurements on. Okay. So when I do my measurements, the first thing I want to do is I want to feel for where it's called external notch. I'm going to feel that. Take that all the way straight, straight down. And everybody has a little bit of a tilt in it. You got a little bit, no big deal. I'm measuring what's called your inframammary fold or the fold below your breast. Now you know you have some differences and that's okay. The left is a little bit, is a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. folds a little deeper, the right's a little bit less. Yeah. It's going to be you, but we'll make it fuller and as nice as we can. And then I'll give you as much symmetry as possible. That sound good? Of course. Uh, why did you decide to come to me? Um, I googled you, uh -huh. but then I definitely looked at all of your work and uh -huh. your quality is amazing. Thank you. And your reviews and yeah, it's just um, compared to even places I've looked across the world, mm -hmm. you def you're definitely Black. someone who someone who the attention to detail. Like you definitely absolutely. I want it to be perfect. Now we're going to measure how much your nipples move when we put the implants in. To do that, I'm going to give you a Y like this. Right there, okay. Make sure you're breathing so you don't faint. Now I'm going to connect this. And you can see that the left nipple is moving a little bit higher than the, than the right. We're going to accommodate for it the best we can. Okay, relax for me. Remember? Now I need to measure how much am I going to drop the fold. The implant, based on the implant's dimensions, I want to drop it about 5.4 centimeters. So I'm going to measure that number. We're going to be close, but we're going to be a little bit different on each side. Give me that wire one more time. approximately five centimeters.
Okay, good. Now I'm going to measure the width of the of the where I'm going to put the implants. I'll do my best to give you as much cleavage as possible. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to draw the shadow of the implant. Thanks for me. Perfect. You can come out. And you know with these piercings, mm -hmm. there is a risk of burn. Yeah. We're going to take every precaution. I'll use the safest settings possible, but if you get a burn... I shared with her, if she gets a burn, it's going to be disfiguring, it's going to be ugly, and it's going to be a permanent scar. We're going to do everything we can to prevent it. However, she's at high risk. As I was doing the surgery, we were keeping close eyes on her piercing to make sure her skin wasn't burning around it. With each move, I was focused on what I was doing, but I was also paying attention to it. Surgery was a wild success. The implants looked perfect. She's happy with them. Everything settled. There was no burn. Well, the implants were very fine. Well, we kept a close eye on her piercings. There, were, there was no burn and no injury. Right. Okay. Um, do you have all the instructions here? Good morning, sunshine. You did it. Lift your back up. You're just waking up from surgery. Okay, so just take it off. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, here. Keep your bra on. Hello. Hi. How did it? How are you feeling? Good. Surgery went amazing. It was a wild success. Good. We were able to get the implants lined up. Got the nipples lined up and went very smooth. All right. I talked to your caregiver. She's so excited to see you. I'm excited. I know this is going to give me the confidence that I've always needed. And Dr. Sahan uh, is a definitely a great doctor researching him and everything. And he just makes me feel comfortable because of the, the work that he has put up on the Instagram and everything. How's it going? You ready to take a look? Yes. All right, let's see what we got, okay? All right, let's take a look and make sure things are, things are the way they should be. When patients first see their breasts after surgery, they're a little bit shocked. There's two main things going on. Number one, they look boxy and a little bit weird because things have to settle and they're swollen. The second thing is they're not used to that on their body. So some patients will have some disassociation where they feel it's not them and it's not part of them. It takes time. And I know they're sitting a little bit high. They will relax and the swelling goes down. Okay. Everything looks perfect. No bruising. You're going to get some swelling here. That's totally normal. Okay. That's what I feel like Implants are in perfect position. How do you feel? I feel, I feel like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, at least it's not. I'll check on you in three weeks. Just take it easy till that slowly advance. 
for, for the next week, just take it easy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you hug you so much. I appreciate you. So what we'll do for her is what she's going to be like. Once you lose things, it's it's really like, okay, if those are my prized possessions, why am I bringing myself back tattered up, you know, on the inside, you know, like, so it's interesting because we're like wanting to take care of these things, but then we're not taking care of ourselves. So it was like, it was one of those wide awakenings, like, okay, I'm going to keep leaving and coming back and losing stuff in the process, but I'm really like, either I lose myself or I have to like figure it all out so so that's why three years ago I like stopped drinking yeah I would, and, and and even um like I, I'll still think about the size I chose and everything like that but then I was like I don't want negative attention I just want myself to feel good in order to like actually project who I really am yeah. versus trying to be like everybody else and go for the double D's <laughs> you know what I mean like for me it's like I just want to be confident in who I am and then it projects out the day started off pretty uncertain so I got to learn a little bit more about Mercedes during her recovery and she shared her hardships with me and everything she's gone through but Mercedes was persistent and she was gonna get the surgery done no matter what. I learned a lot about her and I just admire her so much for her confidence, her courage, her positivity, and I'm really happy that she did this for herself and she looks great. What I love about surgery is that it's a journey. Every patient has their own road they take to end up where they want to be. Mercedes had a lot of ups and downs and it was pretty much a roller coaster. At the end of it, she got exactly what she wanted. It was done safely and she's happy. And I'm so happy for her. It's to the point where like everybody's, what box can I fit you in? You know what I mean? And people don't understand it's not about black and white. It's actually about uniting all of us together and finding like the common ground between it because Literally, you could see the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, but then you could just see how we're looking at the outside things to make us feel better and what we can grasp. But when you can find peace in that craziness, that's when you're most dangerous.